So IFA is happening right now in Berlin, and because of that, we're getting a bunch of tech news. And one of the biggest pieces of news recently is the fact that Intel has finally announced their new series of Core Ultra 200V processors as part of the Lunar Lake series of chips. These new chips are supposed to come with some pretty massive performance improvements. But it's not just massive performance gains that are happening here. The real kicker is the fact that not only are these performance improvements coming with the new architecture, there are some massive efficiency gains happening here. It really seems like Intel is trying to make sure that Qualcomm does not have an easy time getting into the PC market. Because going from Meteor Lake to Lunar Lake, they seem to have gained so much efficiency that it's really putting some pressure onto Qualcomm. And already the big benefit that Intel is going to have is the fact that x86 just has a longer track history of support in terms of software. So even if they can't 100% match the efficiency of Qualcomm because we need to see the performance numbers in real world scenarios. But even if they can't 100% match what Qualcomm is doing, it doesn't matter if they get close enough, all the other benefits of x86 are going to carry them over the finish line. It's already tough to really recommend an ARM based laptop to somebody because the difficult part isn't the fact that your software is inherently not going to work. Chances are whatever it is that you want to use will likely work on an ARM laptop. The issue is when something doesn't work and you try to explain that to somebody. Because if somebody isn't a tech savvy person that keeps up with all of this stuff, they might not know exactly why their ARM based laptop is having issues running a program that they just want to use. And when you sit there and explain to them, hey, it's because of the fact that there is a mismatch in architecture here and the software that you're trying to use wasn't built for that specific architecture, they're not really going to understand what you're saying. All they're going to hear is you saying, hey, your brand new machine cannot use the program that you want it to use and they're justifiably going to be upset by that because they just spent 800 900 or even a thousand dollars plus on a brand new laptop and it can't run a program that they need for school it just doesn't make sense to them so they go back to best buy or whatever and they tell them hey my program didn't run on this thing what do i do how do i fix this the tech there tech quote unquote which is really just a retail employee is just going to be like well there's this new intel c series of processors that are really great. Intel has a proven track record. All of these companies always want to sell Intel systems anyway. So this employee is going to be incentivized to try to push that Intel laptop. And they know that person's really not going to be coming back and complaining about, oh, this program couldn't run on there because it's an x86 laptop. It's just going to work. And like I said, if anything of this claim here holds up to be true, even remotely, it's going to look really, really bad for Qualcomm. Really, really bad. But of course, those are the efficiency gains, which are really important for the laptop market since it is by far the largest consumer facing market. But what I care about most is actually the graphics performance because I'm interested in this chip in a mini PC where these chips can really flex their muscle by just ramping up the amount of power they can utilize and really getting the most out of the hardware. So the top of the line SKU is going to be the Core Ultra 9 288V. Absolutely terrible name, but whatever. And it's a 4 plus 4 core design with a maximum clock speed of 5.1 gigahertz. It's going to feature the Arc 140V graphics, which is an 8XE 2 core GPU that clocks all the way up to 2.05 gigahertz. One of the biggest claims that Intel is making right now is the fact that apparently the performance per watt gains are substantial to the point where at low TDPs, we're talking going down to about 20 watts or lower than that around 15 to 20 watts really at that range they claim that the gaming performance is going to be comparable to the previous generation at a much higher tdp so if that ends up being the case that's actually really interesting because even if there is no gain in terms of graphical performance in that scenario the efficiency gains are going to make it so that handheld devices and midi pcs and stuff like that are going to be able to run cooler and quieter and in the case of laptops and handhelds for longer again we have to see if they can actually execute on this and give us exactly what we want to see. But as far as I'm concerned, I am very interested in what this new series is going to end up looking like on many PCs in particular. One of the things that I do appreciate is also the fact that in terms of the iGPU, it's not ridiculously cut down like what AMD does with their product. So going down to even the lowest end of the core ultra 
5 series, we're still looking at a, a 130V GPU, which is 7 cores, clocked at 1.85 gigahertz. And even the maximum AI performance is not dropped all that dramatically. Because again, it's not really all that cut down at all. This GPU configuration is looking like what AMD used to do. This to me shows a good sign because this is Intel saying, hey, we want to compete. We want to actually compete. We're not sandbagging. We're not keeping all of the best performance at the top of the line and you get nothing at the lower end. This is going to be great performance all around all across the product line. And when you really look at the core configuration for everything, it does not seem like there is much of a difference at all with the lower end Ultra 7 versus the top end Ultra 9. So the Ultra 7 and the Ultra 5 might end up actually being killer deals here, but we'll have to see where mini PCs actually end up landing with these chips. Overall though, this is the most excited that I've ever been for an Intel launch and one that I'm actually really excited about. I really hope some manufacturer wants to sample one of these systems to me. I've tried to get Meteor Lake systems and nobody wanted to send me one. Everyone was willing to send out AMD based systems. Nobody wanted to send any of the Core Ultra or Meteor Lake. Oh, let's hope that it ends up being different with Lunar Lake. But no matter what, I'm going to be getting my hands on a Lunar Lake system. Even if I have to buy it myself, I will likely have to do that. But I'm getting my hands on one of these. But let me know what you guys think of this announcement from Intel. Are you excited? Are you actually considering an Intel system? Have you always been an Intel buyer and you're just finally excited that there's something new? How are you feeling about all of this? Do you think that the new XE graphics are really going to live up to the performance that it's claiming? I mean, the gains that they're claiming do seem pretty substantial, but when it comes to Intel, it's one of those things where we'd have to wait and see. I mean, driver support is just so much better than where it was before, but it's still not perfect. But it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. But no matter what, I'm very excited to see what Lunar Lake is actually going to be like in real performance. And luckily, we won't have to wait very long. There's already some laptops that are available for pre-order. I'm going to wait until there's mini PCs available. But if you are interested in picking up a laptop with this specific SKU, there are already systems available for pre-order. That said though, when talking about mini PCs in relation to this, Asus did launch their new line of Nook products based off of these Lunar Lake processors. And one of the interesting aspects of it is the fact that it actually includes a dedicated co-pilot button on the actual chassis of the mini pc itself that's right it has a button there dedicated just to launch co-pilot this is more than likely going to be one of the most unused buttons on a computer probably ever i would love to know the stats on how many people on their brand new ai laptops have ever even used that button intentionally as opposed to accidentally and what the number is going to be like for the specific asus mini pc it's a real shame that asus is the ones that ended up with the nook division from intel i think asus is just one of those companies where their products are so expensive adding on on top of the already expensive intel tax you add in the asus tax their mini pcs become very difficult to recommend to people they're decent quality products for sure but the price just does not make it worthwhile in terms of the actual mini pc itself it seems to be in line with what we would expect for a lunar lake system nothing particularly impressive or groundbreaking in this at all but it is i guess neat to see that we're already getting mini pcs coming out with these specific chips it's just unfortunate that it has to be asus of all companies that's the thing that kind of sucks because on the mini pc market we do end up a little screwed in that the only companies that are selling anything are just these chinese companies that have less established distribution networks and everything within the united states so they don't really do proper customer support it becomes very difficult to handle anything that you could normally easily get done with a company that actually has a more established network for all of of that asus being one of the largest oems on the planet you would think would have that on lock but as we've seen their customer support might as well be as bad as any chinese company so might as well save the money just save the money just save the money and buy yourself a mini pc or two from a chinese manufacturer for the same price that you would pay for this thing and you'll get the exact same level of quality customer service but anyways let me know what you guys think about lunar lake let me know what you think about the asus mini pc how excited are you for that co-pilot button on the chassis is this the new trend should we just replace every key on the keyboard with a co-pilot button let me know down below i'll catch you guys in the next one